Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and head to my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get to it. So I want to walk through briefly. Now, I promised I would cover SvelteKit. This video is my first in, in what will have to be a series because SvelteKit is not a small tool. Now, it's pretty straightforward once you get into the documentation in order to use it on a basic level. However, this is not just a replacement for some sort of uh, front end tooling. It's not a replacement for Vite. It actually uses Vite under the hood. SvelteKit is more in line with a Next or Nuxt JS in that it's really designed to help with a full stack application. So let's get that out of the way immediately. SvelteKit is not just a front end build tool. This is a full stack framework tool. Now, looking at the documentation, the very first thing that they tell you when you look here is, hey, if you're new to either of these, you really need to check out the tutorial because there is a lot of functionality built into SvelteKit and there is a ton that you can do. However, uh, I've been playing around with this. I've actually converted my website to using Svelte and I redid it again all from scratch using SvelteKit. The toughest part that I will have to tell you is that because SvelteKit is made for really complex full stack applications, uh, it's not optimal for a simple static uh, SPA. You can do it, uh, however, the documentation eh, was kind of eh on the uh, SPA uh, project. Uh, I, I was able to figure it out and I will do a video showing you guys how to do that as well. But I will just say, if you are only going to use this or you only want to do a single page application or a static site, I probably would just stick with using uh, Vite and skipping the SvelteKit. However, if you want to do something more complicated, then SvelteKit would be the way to go because you can really get crazy with what we're doing here. Now, I'm just going to cover the basics here. What we're going to do is we're just going to start a SvelteKit application and I'm going to kind of walk through how it works. Let's do an npm create svelte at latest. And the first thing it's going to do is say, hey, where do you want to put this? We're not in a blank directory, so be careful with what you're doing. You can just add a directory. So here I'll do uh, dot slash kit. Now it also asks you, hey, do you want to you know, see a demo, do you want to create this demo where we show you stuff? Do you want to create a skeleton project for, you know, to start something? Or do you want to create, are you creating a library project? We can do that, uh, help you get started in that as well. Let's just do a skeleton project. And then here we still have that built-in TypeScript support. We have the additional feature of uh, using TypeScript with JavaScript JS doc comments or using TypeScript syntax. So whichever you guys prefer, I'll use the TypeScript syntax. You don't have to. Now you can start to get crazy on adding additional features here. Because SvelteKit is for developing a full stack application, it is what I would call feature rich. We can add a linting here. We can add prettier here. We can add playwright for browser testing. I'm going to skip that one. Uh, we can add Vite test, which is great. That's a new testing environment from Vite. Those guys are great, by the way. If you've not checked out Vite, you definitely need to do that. Uh, again, that's what Svelte uses under the hood, even in SvelteKit. So the next thing that we would do here is get into that directory that they so kindly created for us. Thank you. And then just do an npm, uh, not cpm, npm install to get everything going. Now, I use different versions of Node for different things. I will point out here that you do have to have a very specific version in order to use SvelteKit 1.0. So they also recommend, this part's cool, they recommend right away initializing your Git repository and adding everything in there to get you started because uh, th those are proper programming practices, right? I feel like they take 
development seriously. And one of the reasons why is stuff like this. They're encouraging you to be using a Git. They're encouraging you to start committing from the very first time you fire up your application or you install your application. Get that initial commit. We want to have a solid uh, commit foundation with clean commits all the way through. So I think that's really cool that they do that. I just wanted to point that out. We have our everything installed. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a git init. And I don't like having um, all of the git commands all in one. They've got them com compiled together into like one giant command. Let's go ahead and do them step by step. So we initialize our commit and then we add everything. And then we commit everything, git commit. And the dash M flag is what lets you tag a message on there. And I just say init. All right, so we have everything installed. We have our initial commit set up. Now we can do an npm run dev. The dash 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 open. And here we have our Svelte kit. Um, they, again, this is the Svelte kit for really getting started on a project. Let's take a look at the directory that this creates. So here is the kit directory and inside you'll see all kinds of stuff, right? We have a Vite config and this just is just importing our Svelte kit plugin. We have our TS config for our TypeScript. We have a Svelte config that is using this uh, Vite preprocess. If you're going to be creating a single page application or a static HTML page uh, with this, you will need to modify this. I would say moderately, not heavily, but moderately, you will need to modify this. I can get into that in another video. We have our package.json standard, package lock standard. This is for prettier, prettier if you're not familiar with what it is, is it lets you run a command on your command line that makes your code all look standard. So it sets standard indentations, uh, standard lines, all that stuff. We have our git, our prettier ignores, our git ignores. Here's our linting file that does our linting for us. And then we have a static directory that just has an icon. So inside of source, that is where things really start to get interesting for SvelteKit. Now SvelteKit is, well, first of all, it handles your routing for you. It's super easy to set up routes with SvelteKit. It's super easy to implement uh, moving from one route to the next. Because it's so full stack oriented, it does not use hash routing, it uses standard routing. So you would need to configure your server just a little bit so that if you're off on some very uh, narrow route and a user hits the refresh button, that the server knows where to put that person again since there won't be a hash there. But that is small potatoes if you are working on a full stack application. Inside of SvelteKit, the base route this slash, uh, this routes, and then plus page.svelte. So what this actually is, it, this is a directory-based routing system, a directory-based page system. So this is actually the base route or your home page, if you will. If you wanted to create another page or when you want to create another page, what you do is you create another folder and then call this, you know, about. And then inside of about, you have another file uh, called plus page.svelte. And what this is, whatever you want to put in here. So do an h1 and say, you know, welcome to about. Welcome to about. Like that. So now inside of our app, we actually have two pages. We have a home and then we have a slash about. Now, the other thing that you can do inside of inside of here is you can create, man, you can you, you could do so much with this, but you can add a layout file and you can have, and it looks like this, you have new file and plus layout.svelte. And inside here, what you do is, let's do a script. Let's do, let's do this. Inside a source, let's create a new folder and call it lib. 
and then inside of lib create a new file and call this navbar.svelte inside of here let's just do an a href equals slash about and then close it off and say about like that now inside of that layout here's what we're going to do we are going to import navbar check the import statements sometimes because it's file based or hierarchy based folder based so i've had some of the auto imports not work correctly so make sure that it is in fact correct and then inside of here what we do what we can do is say navbar like that and then here we do a slot like this okay and what this is going to do it's going to essentially wrap everything that we send it and everything that's it's going to send is all of our pages every page is going to have this so let's go ahead and save that and inside of so you can see that we now have it automatically wrapped our app in that layout using a slot and then if I hit about you can see that the nav bar is still there and here is our header so it makes setting up an application really really fast really fast I mean you can see uh, how quickly I went through this creating this very small app and how how intuitive it is you can have a layout a home layout right and it's going to wrap every single thing in this layout if I were to have another layout specific to the about page I would put that inside of the about directory and then that one would overrule this one so really allows a lot of standardization and customization the other thing that we can do in here is inside of every for every page right there is the page a layout and there's also a, a javascript file or a typescript file depending on what flavor you choose that will run right alongside your right alongside your page let's say that there's some sort of data that you need i'm going to move over to the documentation for this one to give you guys a look so here we have this page data now inside of that .js or .ts file what they're used for is let's say you have a slug and what a slug would be would be um, a, some sort of payload in your URL that you're going to take that payload and retrieve something from a server or here they're just plopping it into the title to kind of show you how it works but you can export this function called load and then it will run this right alongside your page file so it'll run this function and then handle whatever functionality you put in there and then put that in your page for you so pretty cool stuff there so that is a brief look at svelte kit this is how you set it up this is how you set up your routes this is how you set up a layout file and these slots are super cool you actually can name these as well you could have multiple slots you could put fallback values i'm going to do a, a longer video on these so it's interesting i'm glad that svelte kit is making use of these i thought these were a super cool thing that svelte has so i hope that you guys have found this video helpful if you did don't forget to like and subscribe give me that thumbs up check out my website consultingninja.tech stay tuned for the next video and as always have a great day